I recently made a front end for a scooter. It's a unique version of our leading link suspension, and it's a great case study in rake and trail. Now, a leading link front end is nothing new in motorcycling. There are many examples. They are considered good options for motorcycles with sidecars, and they flourished in the 1960s and 70s dirt bike scene. Now, my understanding is that the leading link was very popular amongst dirt bikes because of its ability to go over rocks and other obstacles. The one I made is inspired by the Urbet Ego, an obscure electric bike. Now, the thing I have discovered in making a leading link is that it has an interesting effect on rake and trail. So I wanted to share this case study because as an amateur designer, I find it fascinating and I can't be the only one. If you want to see the front end being made, there are two videos I will link in the description. Also, let's define rake and trail. Rake is the angle of the steering neck on the frame of the bike. This angle helps to set our trail as it virtually extends to the ground. Where it hits the ground is important as it relates to where the tire hits the ground. The relationship between these two points is a major factor in giving the bike its handling characteristics. That would hopefully keep the bike stable at high speeds and make it highly maneuverable at low speeds. And this is also why a bike, when you let go of the handlebars, will continue to travel in a straight line. What is known as a caster effect. I like to think about it like this. A flag on a pole turned upside down. The pole extends from the steering neck down all the way to the ground. It comes in contact at the ground in front of the motorcycle tire. The flag, as you're moving forward, is naturally going to flap backwards towards the motorcycle. And as you turn the motorcycle, that flag is going to flap backwards and push the motorcycle back into a straight line. That's kind of a visualization of the forces affecting the motorcycle. The further that flagpole is in front of the tire, the more the flag is going to be able or want to push the motorcycle into a straight line. And the closer that pole is to the tire, the less straight line effect it's going to have on the motorcycle, but also conversely, the quicker that motorcycle is going to turn at low speeds. The distance between the pole and the tire contact patch, or the spot on the ground where the tire touches, is called trail. In simple terms, the further the pole is in front of the tire contact patch, the more the bike will want to go in a straight line and be more self-stabilizing at high speeds. And the worse it will be at turning at low speeds. As the pole gets closer to the tire contact patch, the steering will become more erratic at high speeds, but at low speeds will make the bike much more maneuverable. And in an extreme example, if the tire contact patch goes in front of the pole, where you have negative trail, now at high speeds, it's going to be extremely unstable as the forces are gonna to wanna to turn the wheel from one side or the other. It's gonna do the opposite of trying to keep the bike straight. But at low speeds, it's going to make the bike extremely maneuverable. So there's more to a bike stability and maneuverability than just rake and trail on the front end here but it does have a major impact on the handling of a motorcycle or scooter. And there's also an ideal range for trail. It's not just a specific point that is perfect for all situations. It is a range that may be better on one application or another. And there can be range within any single application. Most bikes have a change in their trail as they go through their compression stroke. But ideally, we would minimize that change in trail as much as possible. And so this brings us to my suspension. Now that we've got it together, it's constructed, we can use a laser to literally see the change in trail as the suspension goes through its compression stroke. I'm gonna get my laser set up on the steering stem here. Get that set in place so that we can actually project a dot onto the floor. I'm also gonna throw a tape measure down here so we can actually see, get a good idea of how much this thing is changing. All right, so here's my laser. I've got it zip tied to the top here, and this take this with a grain of salt. It's not going to be, yeah, I just moved it. It's not going to be precisely straight here in terms of our exact projection of our steering stem. It should give us a very precise idea, though, of how much range there is in our trail here as, this, as the suspension goes through its compression stroke. So here's our dot. I'm gonna line this up with a nice even number, like 20, and let's see how it changes. 
So we've got five inches. It goes from 20 to 15 on our suspension. So five inches change in trail, that's a lot. And the size of that range in trail is totally an artifact of the design on the suspension. It's just, because we have this arc to the suspension, that's a major factor in it. It's just one of the drawbacks, and in this case study of looking at this specific suspension design, it is one of the major drawbacks in it. Are there advantages? Yeah, you've got a lot of suspension travel. That's pretty cool. Is it really uh, great for a scooter? Uh, it's not really the best application for, <laughs> for such a design, but it is interesting, and that's kind of what we're doing this for. It's just for fun. We are learning as we make these things. I like to get my hands on stuff and now I know firsthand what's good and what's bad about this thing. So how do I improve my design? One thought is to shorten this arm here. Think of this arm as a radius. As the wheel travels on the far end of it, it has to travel in a curve. And it's that curve that creates our change in trail as the suspension moves. Because the wheel is, be is literally becoming closer and further away from our steering neck. So if we shorten this arm, we may be able to minimize the size of that curve and therefore reduce the change in our trail. However, we can only get it so close because that wheel, because it's on this arm, this single arm, is always going to be moving closer or further away from our head tube. A better solution may be to add another link in our suspension. If I added a hinge up here, that would then allow both of these arms to move with the suspension. It would also eliminate that curving on the wheel and allow the wheel to move more in a straight line up and down. And that would decrease our change in trail as the suspension compresses. Obviously that second arm moving would create all kinds of obstruction issues. Now the suspension would hit the frame of the bike. It's more complex than this, but in simple terms, doing something like this would improve our suspension. And so this brings us to the Ribby quadrilateral fork. These were, I believe, the highest evolution of the leading link suspension design. And they were designed by a guy named Valentino Ribby in the 1970s. It was such an effective design for motocross racing that Honda bought the rights to it, only to later find out that producing such a front end was too expensive and discontinued it in favor of the cheaper to produce telescoping front ends that most factory bikes have today. The Ribby is a great solution as it minimizes the change in trail of the suspension while still allowing for a large range of motion of the wheel and the superior off-road rock climbing ability of a leading link suspension. It's a couple levels higher in complexity than my current scooter front end where it's got one, two, three, four different hinging points on it, plus the shock hinging points. So it's gonna be more expensive and time consuming to produce such a front end, or for me to make such a front end, and do I wanna do that on this $50 scooter? No. Am I intrigued enough by this design to wanna build it myself at some point? Yes, totally. I'm just not sure what bike yet. So on mine, I have a different solution. But I hope you enjoyed this introduction to, to this Ribby quadrilateral suspension because it is super cool and it's obscure. A lot of people don't know about it. And if you're into bike suspensions, you should because this is pretty awesome. So I'll put a link in the description to an article or two where you can find out more about this thing and I encourage you to check it out. All right, so on our suspension here, the change that I want to make is actually pretty simple. I just want to remount this arm to our steering stem. We have this at the wrong angle, basically. If I rotate this arm, this guy here, back a little bit, and we've got, we've got, still got two or three inches between before this arm hits the frame of the bike. So we've got some room to play with. And I don't think we need much. I think I need to change this about half a degree to one degree, and that will effectively change this steering stem angle and turn this out a little bit and project that beam further out in front of this wheel, and that should solve our problem. We're still gonna have five inches of range in our trail, like that's not gonna change, that is inherent to the suspension design currently. So I'm just gonna manage for that, where I'm gonna make sure that that range is in front of the wheel at all times, that's what I'm going for here. So I wanna change that range, so it'll be from about two inches in front of the contact patch here, 
and then five inches in front of it. So that will be our range. And that may take our handling from being very quick and precise to being more stable at high speeds. It may not scoot much at low speeds. It may be a longer turning radius on this thing, but at least it will be safe. And to demonstrate why I'm currently concerned with this suspension as is, is that when you compress it, when the suspension is compressed all the way down, we end up with a negative trail. And so that means the wheel is going to be much more likely to want to turn this way or turn that way on a negative trail. And so if you were traveling at the top speed of the scooter, I don't know what that is, 50 miles an hour maybe, and you hit a decent bump, the suspension compresses down and all of a sudden you are in negative trail and the steering essentially becomes unstabilized and this thing just wants to jerk off to the side. You're going for a tumble all of a sudden and that's not cool. So we are going to try and make this suspension as stable as we can. So we have to take this suspension apart now. Let's take a note here that I am an amateur uh, at best sort of hobbyist guy just sort of messing around here. Am I trying to encourage you to make this exact suspension design yourself? No. Do I really expect anybody to do that? No, definitely not. It's a weird suspension. Do I hope it inspires you to do something cool on your own though? Yeah, I hope it does inspire you. And I hope you might not even know what it is you want to do yet, but hopefully when you do go and do it, if you're an amateur sort of moron like I am, hopefully I'm giving you some ideas of things you should be looking at when making a suspension. You are literally watching in real time a guy who has no formal training in engineering or design learn a few things about engineering and design. All right, so we got things apart now and here are my little pretty welds on this thing. I'm gonna cut them right off. If I were wiser, this is one of those cases where I could have put like a half inch tack here and there on this thing and then tried it out on the bike and come to the same conclusion, the same spot, but not have it fully welded up and this would be easier to uh, deconstruct, but you know. Now I gotta get my table out. All right, so we've got everything fixtured up. We've got our little laser going here. So everything we know, it's all straight. I've got this guy set up at its current angle. And I've got some space here on the table so that we can tilt this thing down just a little bit. This big piece of aluminum here, this represents the ground. And then I've got my little laser, my other laser set up here. So this projects our dot, currently our dot right there. Do you see it? And so is, is this exactly where our thing is? It's pretty close. It should be pretty close. For our purposes here, all we need to know is that that's where it is now with the current setup. Angle on this should be the same as the angle on the laser. And so our dot should move. And so what we want to do, we want to move this dot out about five inches. I think we'll be safe then. All right, so here's our dot's current location. All right, so now I'm going to loosen this guy, move this down. That gives us space to bend the steering stem down. Let's see. All right, so now our dot is right here. It was down here, now it's up there. That is a difference of about two and a half inches. All right, so at this point, I wanna take this off of here and try it out on the bike and make sure our clearances on between the, the arm and the frame are still there. All right, so we still got an inch or so. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and tack this thing up, put a nice little tack on there, and then we'll test it back out on the bike and see where we're at. We still got plenty of room here. At the steepest spot is right, right in the middle of the contact patch and then it goes in front of the contact patch. I think we're in the realm of safe, but questionable. All 
All right, so we've made some improvements here. I'm still not entirely happy with the amount of trail that I've got on this front wheel. All right, so at this point, I see three options for this scooter build. Well, four if I throw it in the trash, but three options for this scooter build. I can try and shorten this hoop a little bit, which will move this wheel back a little bit and gain us a little bit of extra trail on the front here. And or I can modify this guy again and try and swing it back and gain a little bit more space there, which again will give us a little bit more trail up front. I can redo this suspension completely or I can go back to the frame and change our actual rake on the frame of the steering head up here. I can tilt this guy out just a little bit. And I mean like, I'm probably only off like, or need to move it like a degree. I'm gonna shorten this arm by two inches. At our lowest point in our suspension travel, our trail point is like right at the center of our contact patch. If we add two inches to it, it'll put it out here and that should make it perfect. Do I have two inches here to take? I think so. If I take two inches out, if we set our calipers to two inches, that will push this guy, the edge here, over all the way to here. <laughs> and it gives me like three eighths of an inch between the shock mounting point and the tire. The shock mounting point is going to be, you know, over in here, which is gonna look kind of odd, I think, compared to where it is now. And then effectively what we'll do is just move this wheel over. And then this will still stay at the same angle. It'll just move forward. That should solve all of our problems and it's the simplest solution. All right, that's a lot better. I'm curious to see how this thing rides. Well, that was a fun journey, huh? It feels different just being on the ground here, pushing the bike around. The steering feels different. I don't even have handlebars on the thing. So it uh, definitely is different. And there was a moment there where I was just gonna ride with this thing, try it out the way it is, and then redo it if I had to. But I took the time and went back and persevered, got it done, and now, I'm happy that I've accomplished this thing and I'm hoping that it's an improvement. I don't know until I ride it, right? So we'll see. So hopefully this video is helpful to somebody out there, inspiring, and I, I thought it was an interesting journey myself. So thanks for watching everybody. We'll see you next time.